anything makes human beings human, it's language. It's not necessarily spoken language, written language. It's the sense that you're connected with somebody else. And that to get a full or complete view of yourself, you have to be connected to other people. And they, they give you some sense of who you are by looking at you from the outside. How would I describe myself in a few words? Uh, book collector, being solitary, and liking animals. Resilient. I'll try anything once. What makes me me is my ability to do art. My passion, therefore, for creativity and making things and fixing stuff. I particularly like machines. Um, and I'm reasonably well educated in a lot of different ways, some formal, some informal, so I guess I can talk pretty good um, and stuff, although that wasn't a great way to say it. Everything I've looked for every experience, things that you experience when you're young that stay with you for all your life, I suppose determine what you become. But you get an idea by walking into my place as to what my priorities are and who I am and how I fit into the world. It's like saying, saying to somebody if they were to look at a bookshelf that I have there, this, this sums up who I am. It's like trying to make a work of art of my own life. My earliest memory of home would be waking up on a Christmas and there was a bike and I just knew it was for me. And, that, and I, you know, I really felt happy and grounded. Riding my bike for the first time down a hill and I didn't know where the brakes were but I didn't care, I was really happy to know how to ride the bike. And I, I fell off, I fell off, got really badly hurt, cut my nose, but it didn't bother me, I got back on the bike. What's my earliest memory of belonging? I don't feel like I've ever belonged, to be honest. I'm a bit of a loner. Belonging is a difficult question for me because I, I kind of never really experienced that. When my nan and my koro wanted us to go home because my mum had passed away, then I felt safe again. I loved my nan, she was everything to me. Even when my mum was alive, but even more so when my mum passed away. We did everything together. Well, my dad I can't remember very well because he died when I was four and a half. My mum was a very efficient lady, but I wasn't really that close to her. Never close at all. So my, my relationship with my family is uh, complex, to say the very least. I have a consistent block there, basically, with all of my members of my family who are, are religious. Um, I am quite literally everything they believe is wrong and bad about the world. I've got a mum and a dad, obviously. Um, two sisters, younger than me. And we immigrated to New Zealand in 1977 when I was 11. Now, I suppose the reason we came here was because my father stabbed my stepfather. And my father did what he did. It ruined our lives, really. My only memories are of being miserable and afraid a lot 
and feeling like if this was all my life was going to be, um, in terms of my parents' religious belief and various other things, and it wasn't very worth living. I think the earliest actual picture memory I've got where I can replay a little video in my head of what happened is actually me trying to off myself when I was about nine. Um, so, yeah. It, it's, it's interesting, when somebody doesn't have an identity, they often look for a diagnosis. I can easily see somebody as, 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 as having a criminal conviction or a driver's license or, an ID, or, or, or a passport and having that as a, an externally validated form of ID, of you being able to say, this is who I am. Now, at that time, it wasn't like that for me. I just wanted to figure out why I was behaving the way I did. I, I, I made appointments to see a clinical psychologist and got a diagnosis as being on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum. Right then, it was a, an enormous step forward and because it meant, meant one, a sense of identity, of, of, of knowing who I was and why I was doing what I did. A home is, I don't know, somewhere safe, somewhere where you can, I don't know, bring up to your children, I don't know, things like, you know, it's, yeah. Well, isn't that what home is supposed to be, I suppose? I just think wherever you go in the world, you know, it's a home is what you make of a home. It's not, it could be the flashiest house around, it doesn't mean that you're going to be happy in it. I think it's the memories and everything you put in a home, that's what makes it a home. People often say home is where the heart is. There's maybe some truth in that, but I narrowed it down to something a bit more logical. Home is personal space. For me, home is where I, you know, wherever I lay my hat, that's my home, you know, because I live on the street. So at the moment, home is Civic Square. I would actually like to say that, you know, for the next, say, five or ten years, I'm going to be in a particular place and I'm going to feel comfortable there. But um, I don't know. I'd always stayed somewhere, you know, I'd had a home, I, I was sorted, and then I, I had nowhere. I just don't think about it, I try not to think about it. I really knew then, like, I liked the people and loved the people around me, but then I realised when it came to me having nowhere to stay, it was almost like people shut down. And I didn't want to be a burden to anyone. I felt like I was being a burden too. So I felt lost and abandoned. Or I fear homelessness. Fear of homelessness is as is, 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 is awful as, as actually being homeless. In fact, I think it's worse because it's that constant gnawing anxiety of what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. On the street, yeah, I felt really disconnected. Um, from most people. Like, just just the, the first day I was on the street, I was like, okay, I'm one of those people now. Like, so there's a different title for you, you're homeless. Homelessness invariably is like, you know, it's, it leads to isolation. Nobody's prepared to talk to you. <laughs> the worst thing actually is that people, people react to you negatively by ignoring you. Um, they dehumanize you very, very rapidly just by ignoring you. You say hello to people and they just look at you or look straight through you. Um, and stuff, and then they also do actually less concerning but much more nasty things like spit at you, hurl abuse, swear at you, throw food, throw cans, throw change, you know. They're terrified that, that, that one day maybe they could be in the same situation. And I see it as hell. Because it's basically it's, it, it reduces their opportunities for choice. They're not looking out there and seeing somebody else sitting in the street is looking up and seeing themselves on the street. And they don't want to sit, they don't want to even think about the possibility. I feel that the, the way people uh, treated me um, and others like me dehumanised um, and made them me less of a person, um, but at the same time didn't. You've always got the choice between the shitty way to look at your life or the good way to look at your life.
Um, it's not going to change what your life is, but it is going to change how you feel about it and how close you are today to being happy or wanting to kill yourself. Well, I would, okay, well, okay. Uh, there wasn't any sort of real reason why I became homeless. And I could actually go and get a place to stay tomorrow if I wanted to. Um, so I always tried to focus on that, well, I'm me, I know that I'm not begging. I know that I'm doing my best to, to earn money and making the best of some shit circumstance that I'm dealing with in life. And various other ways to try and sell it to myself as a more positive experience. Um, I, I would often tell myself and other people that I'd chosen to be homeless um, and that I was doing it as a social experiment to learn more about poor people. It was basically... It was always on the news. Homeless this, you know, the homeless, the homeless, the homeless. And I was looking for an idea to write a sitcom about. And then I thought to myself, well, I can't really write about what I don't know about because it just won't be funny. You know, so I'll take a year or however long it takes and I'll go and be homeless and I'll learn about it. And that's why I'm actually doing this, it's, you know, it's, so that's why I became homeless. Being a woman and being homeless is really, uh, hard it's really hard and because they want to have somewhere to stay they put themselves in unsafe situations yeah, they just put some themselves in some really bizarre situations all because they just want to be able to put their things somewhere and know they can lie down and have a rest preferably without being sexually assaulted or anything uh, but in a, a few of the cases, it ends up being that, or they get violated in some way. Um. I have trouble trusting people, because, you know, a lot of people are quite false. I think the other thing about <clears throat> people who sit in the streets, as opposed to, um, as, as, as homeless people, is that frequently they themselves don't know how to sort of connect with others. They become as 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 as, as, as um, self isolated as the people who are walking past them. But if there were a connection between them and the person experiencing it, then there would be a sense of empathy. If you're alone on the street, you are in major threat territory. It's not a nice place to be alone. Um, psychologically, obviously, it's highly unpleasant, um, but it's actually physically very, very dangerous. Um, you need people um, to sort of back yourself up. Despite having your community as a homeless people uh, person, that's a community as a, of, of necessity. Um, it's, it's about safety. It's about, well, you've got to talk to fucking somebody. Um, it's people you can lean on when you're out of food um, and things of that order. It's a, it's a community of necessity, largely. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I ever truly have been. Doesn't worry me, doesn't interest me, you know. I mean, you never know. Hey, when, you, when you're not looking for it, when you least expect it, I suppose, that when it, you know. But, you know, most times when I've been in love or relationships, it's always kind of ended, well, not badly, I'm not horrible, you know, just, being betrayed or so you sort of say well my bother my bother eh you know we're people just like you we we have sometimes family that we're close to or not close to we have the same issues that you have we worry about the same things you worry about in principle it's just that the mechanics of what we worry about is different um you know, maybe you don't have to worry about food and shelter and where you're going to sleep tonight quite so much as someone who sleeps on the street does have to worry about that. Just because somebody's in a shitty, shitty position in life doesn't mean they're not a person and that they might, might have been a very rich or well off or easier for you to look at or more respectable in your viewpoint, sort of a person not that long ago. 
um, or that they can be that again and that they might want to be. What do I hope for in the future? Mm. I actually hope for a lot. I hope for much more than I'm used to. In my case, actually, as I get older, I get younger. My, my outlook is much more youthful than, 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 than I've been f for a long, long time. It's just the way the world is, I suppose.